Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at two very interesting particle tools that together combine to make this effect. So I want to say a special thank you to this guy for the original concept for this and I'll put a link to his uh, video down in the comments. Okay so let's get started. I'm going to first of all show you how this works and then I'm going to show you why it works because it opens up a whole world of very interesting techniques. Okay so let's get started and add some tools. First of all I'm going to add a fast noise then I'm going to add a particle image emitter so PIE is the shortcut for that. Make sure it's a particle image emitter, not the standard particle emitter. Then let's add a P custom tool. P custom. And let's add a particle renderer tool. And those have all joined up with each other. We're going to take the fast noise and we're going to pipe it into the particle image emitter. And then we're going to come over to the fast noise. Let's click on the image tab. I'm just going to set this up as 400 by 400 because I want a square. And then I'm going to come to the noise tab and I'm going to set the seed rate to 0.1. If you have a quick look at that you'll see we've got this seeding noise texture and that's good enough to get us started. Then if we look at our particle render node you'll see that we've got this grid of particles. Now it's a little bit dense at the moment so we're going to come over to the tool and we're going to set the density to 0.25 on both x and y. Also want to come over to the style and set that to blob instead of point. And we just need to reduce the size on that. Let's go for point zero zero five. It's going to turn off the fast rendering button here so we get a better looking result. And then what we want to do is we want to just lay this flat on the floor. So we're going to come to the rotation and set the X rotation to minus 90. So we've got that sitting flat on the floor. The final step is to use our fast noise to drive the vertical position of these particles. So for that we're going to use our P custom tool and we're going to come to the particle tab here. And you'll see we've got expressions for the X, Y and Z positions along with a whole bunch of other stuff. What we want obviously is the Y position because we want to move it vertically. And very simply, we're going to use the luminance value of the fast noise. So all we need to do is type red, green or blue. So I'm going to choose red, type R, and you'll see that we've now got this mountain of particles. I'm just going to type R minus 0.5 and that'll sit it back on the floor like so, or rather the center, the center point of this is going to be on the floor. So now we've got that, and if we press play, you'll see we've got the beginnings of the animation. Our particle life is not quite adequate, so let's come over to the controls and set that lifespan up to 500 so it lasts for the duration of our composition. We can also come back to our noise, and if we adjust the contrast, let's go for something like 0.2, it flattens off the height of that, and we get this nice undulating mesh of particles. And that is pretty much the effect. We can make it faster by increasing the seeth rate, like so. And as you saw, we can use the contrast to adjust the height of the peaks, like so. We could also increase the detail if we wanted more roughness. That'll look like this. I think I prefer the default value there, but you can play with it as you wish. So that essentially is the way that this works. So I'm not going to go into any detail on how I s set up the final scene. What I'll do is I'll post a link to the composition in the comments and you can have a look at it yourself. Really just a camera, some lights, a little bit of extra particle action, but it's very, very simple. What I want to do is I want to show you why this works rather than just how it works. First of all, I just want to quickly show you how this luminance thing works with the P custom tool. So I'm going to add some text just for fun. 
and I'm going to merge it over my fast noise and I'm going to type p custom. You'll see that what that appears to have done is cut a hole in our mesh, but actually it hasn't done that. What it's done is it's moved all those particles up to the top here, and that's because our text is white and it's taken that value of one and driven those all the way up to the top there. If we were to change this white value to mid gray, so type a value of 0.5, that will sit that text down there on the floor. You can probably see it there. So hopefully you can see that the value of a pixel in the source image determines how high the particles are going to get pushed by the P custom tool. So white is going to push them up and black is going to push them down. Although in the case of our fast noise there, actually the opacity is acting just like black. So the more transparent the pixels are, the more they behave like black and the less they will push the particles forward. Another thing we could try is to remove that altogether. And we could use this image I've got here of a house and pipe that into the particle image emitter. I'm just going to reduce the density down a little bit and then let's have a look at the result. And this is quite dramatic. So, so there's our house image. Hopefully you can see that what it's done here is it's pushed the bright white values forward and the dark values are at the back. So this is quite a cool effect. I can think of some interesting ways in which one could use this with imagery. So obviously if we wanted to control the height of this result, we could add a brightness contrast to the house and just reduce the contrast. But let's try just doing it with the P custom tool instead. So here for the Y expression, I'm going to type R times 0.25. So that's asterisk 0.25. And you can see that's reduced the range. So instead of going from 0 to 1, we're going from 0 to a quarter. So 0.25. And we can adjust that offset. Again, divide that by a quarter. And we're sitting back in the same relative place. So we're starting to see how useful this P custom tool is. So let's look at it in a slightly different way. I'm going to remove the particle image emitter and we're going to try this with a standard particle emitter. So particle emitter, add one of those. I want to come over to the number here and type an expression. So type equals and then if, so double I F open brackets time equals. So that's the double equals zero comma 64 comma zero close brackets. So what's that saying is that on frame zero emit 64 particles and after frame zero don't emit any particles at all. I'm going to pipe that into my P custom tool. So now we've got some particles here. They're not doing anything. The particles by default have no velocity, so they're not going to move. Let's just increase their lifespan to 500. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position them and animate them using the P custom tool. So every particle has an ID and we can use that ID within these expressions. I'm just going to reset this to PY, so that's the default. And I can access the ID using the expression ID. So let's try typing ID for the Y expression. And you'll see we now have a column of 64 particles all going vertically. So each particle has a sequential ID. So particle one will be at position one, particle two will then be at position two and so on. And that's how we get our column of 64. Now, there's one thing you need to know about the ID, which is that it doesn't start at zero, it starts at one, but we want it to start from the ground plane. So what we could do is ID minus one and they would start on the ground plane. Let me just change this style here because we're not really seeing them properly. Let's go back to blob. And in this instance, let's increase that size to maybe 0.25 so we can see them a little bit better like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a grid using this system. But instead of having to type ID minus one in each case, I'm going to use the intermediate tab here and I'm going to type 
ID minus one in there, and then we can access this value over here using I1 instead of ID minus one. So that's the intermediate value. It returns the exact same thing. So now we can build our grid. So I'm going to enter an expression for the X of ID modulo eight. Bearing in mind we've got 64 particles altogether. So each time the particle ID hits a value divisible by eight, it will jump back to zero. If I enter a value of PY for the Y, we can see that those particles are literally just jumping back in the same place. So for the Y expression, we're going to use the ceiling function. So that's CEIL, open brackets, I1, divided by eight. And that gives us a grid. We're sitting one unit above the floor, so we can just bring that down by entering a value of minus one after that Y expression there. So now let's have some fun with the animation. I'm going to add an extra element to this Y expression. So that's plus sine SIN open brackets I1 times time times 0.25 close brackets. And now if we press play, we get this interesting jiggling particle system like that. And let's also add an expression for the Z. So I'm going to use cosine, that's cos, open brackets, I1 times time times 0.25 close brackets. And so now we've got this interesting swirling animation that's uh, very easily achieved. Obviously we can do any number of different variations of this. I'd also like to come down and have, have a play with the color using the red, green and blue expressions. But first of all, I'd like to create a new particle rather than this blob. I don't like these soft blobs. So I'm going to create a new background and come over to the image tab. Let's make it 40 by 40. Come over to color. Let's just create a gradient like that. And then click on the circle mask tool. Set the width and height to one. So now we've got that. And we can use this instead of our blob. So we need to come to the particle emitter style. Let's choose bitmap. And let's choose the result of this and pipe that into the particle emitter there. And uh, now you'll see we've got these slightly more fun looking particles. So come back to the P custom tool. I just want to show you that these red, green and blue expressions, currently they're taking the source value of my particle here, which is just gray. But what I could do is I could enter a value of zero for blue and you'll see they've turned yellow. So let's reset that to blue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a, an expression for the green. So sign open brackets, I1 times time times 0.25 close brackets. And now if I press play, you see that my particles are also changing color. And we could copy that, paste it into the red, change that to cos. And we get some more interesting variation. Just want to add 0.5 to both of those to normalize the values. So I think you'll see that we've very simply created a really interesting complex particle animation that's all being driven by this P custom tool. So there's almost limitless amount that you can actually do with this once you start to get used to it. So thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again another time.